Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at the somewhat counterintuitive graph on page 6.14 of the text. And um, I'll just label the axes here. We've got distance on the horizontal axis and bid rent, R, which is a function of D, on the vertical axis. And agricultural bid rent is represented by a horizontal line. We've got a fairly steep slope, make that even steeper, that represents um, the bid rent function of low income households. And then a somewhat shallower slope that represents the bid rent function of high income households. And what this graph is saying is that at distances very close to the city center, at the city center and very close to the city center, low income households are outbidding high income households for land. And after this point right here, high income households start to outbid low income households for land. That seems quite counterintuitive because it, seem, it, it would seem that high income households ought to be able to outbid low income households at every point along the, um, at any distance from the city center. And I'm going to show you why, although this is counterintuitive, the result is uh, plausible given a particular assumption. Now, the assumption that this result rests on is that the lot size effect dominates the value of time effect as income increases. And that has everything to do with the following ratio, T over L. And you'll recognize that from the uh, bid rent function, R is a function of D, bid rent is a function of distance, which equals agricultural land rent plus transportation costs over lot size times B minus D. Now, when we say that the lot size effect dominates the value of time effect, I'll, we're just making a statement about this ratio uh, within this bid rent function. And I'll show you what I mean. So, we've got T over L, and that equals something. So this, this ratio has some numerical value. And as income increases, the value of time, let me use a different color, the value of time will increase, right? Uh, if your income increases, then it's more expensive for you to commute because of the opportunity cost of sitting in your car. Um, and that increases x, the value of the ratio. And as income increases, uh, demand for space increases, so lot sizes increase and that decreases x. So we have two countervailing forces here when incomes increase and they're, they're um, so we have two different effects and what we want to say we just um, essentially all we want to do is rig the numbers such that overall when both of these things increase when t increases and when l increases the net result is a fall in x. So the effect of lot size dominates the effect of the value of time. And so let's take a look at a numerical example just to see how that might be true. So suppose that T is equal to 50 and L is equal to a tenth of an acre. And the value of that ratio is what's 50 divided by 0 0.1? It is 500, if I've done my math correctly. And now let's uh, increase, suppose income has increased for um, a given household, and let's increase the numerator. So let's change that to, I'll use a different color just to keep these distinct. I'll change that to 60, and we'll leave the denominator the same for now, just to see what happens. So we can see that when we increase the numerator, the overall value of the fraction goes up. Now, Let's try leaving the numerator the same, changing the denominator. So let's change it to uh, 0 0.5. And this is going to be 100. 
so you can see when we increase the uh, the lot size the value of the fraction goes down all else equal now all we want to to do is choose these two numbers we want to increase them both uh, to represent the uh, new value of time and the new demand for lot size for a high income uh, family in such a way that the value uh, or rather the lot size effect dominates the value of time effect so let's try well let's try the two numbers that we just used 0, uh, 60 and 0 0.5 and see if that does the job the net result is 120 right 60 divided by 0 0.5 that's 120 and that meets our criteria right the overall effect both of these numbers have increased but the overall effect is down we started with 500 and now we're at 120 so we found a uh, ratio such that it's true our assumption is true that the lot size effect dominates the value of time effect okay so I'm gonna clear some space don't need this any longer. And we'll work through a numerical example that will hopefully bring this idea um, a bit closer to home and make it uh, try to make some some sense out of it. Um, I'm starting to run out of time in this video, so I think we'll end it here, and I'll see you in the next video.